welcome fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and today we are going to be ranking the books I got from 25 Days of Bookmas from the ones I'm least excited about to the ones I'm anticipating enjoying the most. So really excited to do this and then after I read them all I'm going to go back and rank them by my favorites. Uh, so it'll be fun to compare you know and see which ones I thought were going to be the ones I enjoyed the most and which ones I actually did enjoy the most. So definitely excited to do this video. I have the books all around me. There's so many, so I'm going to have to kind of reach off and such to get them, but I have them all organized. So let's go ahead and jump right in. But before I do, if you're not already, please do subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out. A lot of different things happen on this channel and then give this video a like while you're at it. It really does help us out. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in. So the one I'm anticipating enjoying the least is The Rainmaker by John Grisham. So this one basically follows a young lawyer. He's not quite out of law school, um, but they're required to go and give advice to senior citizens. And he has this couple who is battling an insurance company who refuses to pay for their son's leukemia treatment. So... That's kind of the premise of the book is him taking on this large, you know, insurance uh, entity and, and such. So, um, this one I put as my least anticipating enjoying it the least just because it really, that I don't enjoy those types of books. Like, I know John Grisham is a very popular author. I know a lot of people enjoy him. So I think the writing I'll probably enjoy. It's just gonna be the premise of the book that I'm not gonna enjoy. So that's why this one is at the bottom of the barrel. So the next one, um, so number 24, and I got, uh, The Rainmaker on day eight. So um, this one I got on day 22. This is actually the first of two. There is a sequel that goes with it. Um, and this is called Dust by Joan Frances Turner. And this one is so close to the bottom just because I don't mind zombies when they're kind of done well. But this one, they have, like, an intelligence to them, but I think I'm going to have trouble with gore. I have seen a couple of, like, reviews on this and such, and it is, and even just reading the synopsis, you know, it's talking about her being in love with a maggot-filled corpse, and so I'm just like, I don't know that I'm going to be able to enjoy that aspect of it. Like, I get that kind of goes along with the zombie thing, but I think... That much gore I think is going to be kind of a turn off for this book and so I don't know we'll have to see you know if I enjoy it the premise itself sounds good um there's like a disease and a new creature and basically it's affecting the disease is affecting both zombies and the living um kind of bringing them closer together on the spectrum zombies being more alive like and the living being closer to death. So the premise itself sounds good. It's just going to be the like gore factor if I can get past that. Um, so we, we shall see anyway. Uh, and then the next one is I got on day two. So this one's number 23. As far as I think I'm going to be enjoying it compared to others. And this is actually 8 of 11. I don't know how much this is like a true series or they're kind of like grouped together in a series but they're more standalone so this one is blood and fire by shannon mckenna um and this one is basically um uh, this this lady comes into the main character's all night restaurant and she's being pursued. Um, she's kind of a fugitive. And Bruno has some ties to that. So I think I could enjoy this one if there's a good plot line and a good character build up. But if it's more heavily romance, 
I'm not going to enjoy it. So that's why this one's so low on the list. Um, romance is one of those things, like, I don't really enjoy if it's more focused on the romance instead of the story and the characters. But if they have a good storyline and good characters, I do enjoy romance. Like, Nora Roberts is my favorite author, and there's several of hers that are very much romance based but she really builds up the characters which is what I enjoy so that's why this one's so low on the list it could be kind of a wild card I might actually enjoy this I don't know so um and at any point if any of these I did do a compilation video where I read you know I opened the books and read the synopsis so if you want to get an idea of the synopsis go to my compilation video and I read the, all the synopsis on that video so and then number uh, 22, which I got on day 23, is No One as Witness by Elizabeth George. This one, I kept wanting to put it higher, but there was just other books I thought I would enjoy more. Uh, and I don't really enjoy, like, crime thriller type books. Like, I enjoy them in the moment when I'm reading them, but I'm not ever really grab pull towards or I don't gravitate towards them. So that's why this one's a little bit lower. It kind of has that English detective. Um, it's Detective Inspector Thomas Lindley. And this does, she has a series um, that is based on this detective. But a lot of times when they have a main character they use, the books themselves are kind of more standalone, but you do kind of get a backstory of the main character by, of course, reading all the books. Um, but this one, basically, there was a death and um, an adolescent boy and it's a serial killer and they haven't been able to catch him. And so they bring in Detective Lindley. So again, I think this one I'll probably enjoy somewhat, but I just think I'll enjoy some of the others a little bit more. So... The next one is by uh, Tad Williams. So this one I got on day 13. Um, and this is book two of four. So I'm definitely going to get the first book and read it before I read this one. Just because based on the synopsis and everything, I think it's one that there's a lot of building in the first book. And so you really need to read them in order to be able to fully understand the world. And with these complex types of books... I already struggle, so I definitely want to make sure I'm kind of starting off in the beginning so I can understand it to the best of my ability. But this one is called uh, River of Blue Fire by Tad Williams. It is the second one in the Otherland series. Um, and this one, basically, there's kind of like this multi-dimensional universe, and there's kind of like a secret brotherhood that it's there their area um and now some a small band of adventurers adventurers have penetrated the veil of secrecy so uh yeah i think this one could be interesting the premise with the secret brotherhood and the secret universe and such um and the multi-dimensions it just doesn't sound as interesting to me as some of the others especially with as complex as i'm sure this kind of gets that's why it's lower on the list than some of the others. Um, again, I think it's one I'll probably enjoy if I can, you know, wrap my head around it anyway. But I don't know. It's just lower just because of, of I think I'm going to enjoy a lot of the others better. Not that I'm not going to enjoy this one. So, and then number 20, which I actually got on day 20, is book one of four by Brent Weeks. It is The Way of the Shadows. This one, again, the premise I think I will enjoy. Basically, it follows Azoth, and he's a guild rat, um, kind of in the slums, and he decides to apprentice with an assassin and become an assassin. Um, and so I think this one I will enjoy, but again, it's just one, when I was looking at all the books, I just was pulled towards other books more, and I thought I would enjoy other books more and so that's kind of why this one's a little bit lower on the list even though I I'm, I'm excited to read this one and see what it's about and I'll probably will enjoy it so 
And then number 19, which I got on day 18. This book is actually four of eight, but my husband has the first two books. So I need to get the third book in the series and then I can read them in order. And then if I really enjoy it, I am going to get uh, the last four books. And this one, again, I think I'm really, really going to enjoy this one, but it's just the complexity. Am I going to be able to fully grasp it? Um, which is kind of why it's lower on this on this list, even though I'm really excited about this one. I just, I was drawn more towards other ones. So this one is Black Veil by Kristen Britton. Um, like I said, this is the fourth in the series. Um, but yeah, this one basically there was kind of, um, a dark conqueror and he, they trapped him in this black forest. Um, and that's where he's trapped, but now the barrier is kind of being breached. So I think this one, like, it sounds so interesting and I cannot wait to read it. So my husband has Green Rider and then First Rider's Call. So I just need to get the High King's Tomb. But it does, it sounds like it's right up my alley. It's just, I wasn't as drawn to it as some of the others. Because again, it's that kind of complexity that kind of makes me take a pause. Um, But I do think I'm really, really going to enjoy this one. So I'm really excited. Like now we're getting into the books that I think I'm really going to enjoy. It just was a matter of which ones I'm going to enjoy more. And this one just got pushed down just because I think it's going to be a very complex world. And you're really going to have to dive in to fully understand what's going on. So that's that one. And then number 18, which I got on day four, is Terry Pratchett, Feet of Clay. And I know he has a whole world. Um, and this one is um, a killer is stalking the area and um, trying to find out what's going on, essentially. So... Um, but this one just sounds like it's, it's really funny. Um, like there's, a one of the victims is murdered with a loaf of her own battle bread. <laughs> so available and convenient throwing slices. And there's a, a dwarf that helps him and there's cherry little bottom and trolls and such. And so it just sounds like it's a good time but not necessarily right up my alley. It just, it's a little higher. This one probably would have been lower, but like I said, just the complexity of the other ones, I think this one I'm going to be able to just read and enjoy. And I know there's a ton of books that go into this Disc World series. Like, there is so many of them. So I'm just going to read this one. I'm not going to worry about trying to read the series in the order or anything like that. I know there's, like, graphs made for... Terry Pratchett books of how you should read them and everything. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to read this one, see how I enjoy it. I think it's the one, again, I'm not, I don't like that kind of satirical humor, um, I guess. And so I don't know how much I'm going to enjoy this, but I think it's going to be a, a fairly easy read and just kind of a fun light read, which is why it's kind of where it, where it is. And then the next one, number 17, I got on day 19, and that is The Sinister Pig by Tony Hillerman. And, <coughs> excuse me, this one, it follows uh, Detective Lee Porn, and I don't know if she's Detective, but Lee Porn and Chi. So again, you have series based on just characters, not necessarily that the, the books are you know, in a certain order or anything like that. And I actually have one of his daughter book daughter's books for my ABC author challenge, and she uses the same character, so she just kind of picked up where her dad left off. So this one is where it's at just because I'm really excited to read it, but again, I was just pulled towards other books over this one. But I am really excited to read this one. I think I'm really, really going to enjoy this, um, but I just again, was pulled towards other books over, over that one. So the next one, number 16, I got on day six. This is book two of six. And, uh, it's called Tiger Quest by Colleen Hawk. 
Um, and yeah, I think this looks, I mean, the cover is absolutely beautiful for certain, but it, it just seems like a lot's happening. So, um, Kel so it starts off, Kelsey Hayes' 18th summer was crazy, and she's battling and trekking through the jungles of India, um, falling in love with the 300-year-old prince, and then in this book, she's paired with, uh, the prince's brother, essentially. Um, so, just seems like it's gonna be pretty action-packed, and I don't know, I just wasn't as drawn to it as some of the others, which again, is why it's lower, so... <laughs> And then next, I'm going to have to lean over here. So I kind of put these, there's four of these, um, and I just put these in order. Um, so 15 is the last one in the series, which is Spellweaver. And then I go 14 is Tapestry of Spells, and then 13, Princess of the Sword, and 12, The Mage's Daughter. So Spellweaver, I got on day 14. Tapestry of Spells, I got on day 15. Princess of the Sword, I got day 13, and then The Mage's Daughter, I actually got on day 21. And so I just kind of grouped these together and, you know, started at the beginning, which actually, based on the cover artwork, um, I'm more drawn to the first ones. And so, um, but the synopsis, you know, it just kind of moves through. Uh, and so you basically have um, these characters and... There was, like, a dark power, and so they're trying to stop this dark power, but, like, there's a connection to some of the characters to that dark power. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm missing the first book in the series, so I need to get that. And then there's a lot, a lot more. I think there's 12 of them at this point. So, gotta get the first book so I can read all five of these together, uh, and then I'm going to um, maybe get the rest if I enjoy them. And I put these where they are just because I wasn't as drawn to them as some of the others, but I think they're going to be pretty enjoyable. They don't look all that long and they're broken down enough. I think I can really get into the world and really enjoy them. So that's why those guys are where they're at. So that brings us to day 11. And this one, this one... <sighs> And Black Veil, um, I kind of kept going back and forth between, but this one I was just drawn to more for whatever reason, and I got this one on day 10, and this is actually book two of three, so it's a trilogy by Sarah Douglas, so I need to get the first one, um, and this one is The Twisted Citadel, and so this one is, um, follows three different heroes, and there's a dark god that has risen um, and war approaches. So again, just kind of an epic fantasy and the trio struggles to keep its armies and alliances alive. So I don't know. I, I'm kind of still, even right now, I'm kind of debating between Black Veil and this one. Um, but I think this one being a trilogy is probably going to be a little bit easier. And just the cover art, like, I was very much drawn to this one, which is why it did get put a lot higher than Black Veil. Even though these two, I think, is kind of going to be a toss-up between which one I enjoy more. But Black Veil, there's just so many books, and so I think that's why it got dropped down, where this one is just... Um, just a trilogy, so I think it's going to be easier for me to get into. So, put that over here. The next one is a standalone book, and it's called Paint the Wind by Pam Muniz Ryan. And it's just, it's a horse book, so... Um, but again, it basically follows um, the main character, and she's had to live with her grandmother and her grandmother's very, very strict, and then there's a wild horse, and somehow they get connected. Um, we don't we don't know how. I actually looked up um, when I was kind of organizing these books. Um, I was I'm making sure whether they were with the series or they were standalone or whatever. I did see some reviews on this, and it's not very good. So that might have kind of affected where I put it, but... 
at the same time, it's a horse book, and I think I'll really enjoy it, so we shall see, but that's why it's where it's at, at number 10, and I did get it, I don't know if I said it already, but on day 9. And then for number 9 in the list, this one I got on day 1. I kept wanting to put it higher because it has dinosaurs, but there's just other books that I was just more drawn to. Like I was looking at them as kind of what would I want to pick up next. Um, so this one is Winter in Eden. This is book two of three by Harry Harrison. So I am going to need to get the first one. And I don't know. I think it has dinosaurs. I'm just really, really excited to, to read this. I think this one I could actually probably read by itself. But I'm, I'm probably going to get the, the first one. Um, and yeah, really just excited. Uh, basically, this one, a new ice age threatens Earth. And so the dinosaurs are intelligent beings. And so they must um, employ their mastery of biology. And so they're kind of, it's a territory battle between them and the humans to help them survive this ice age essentially so really excited for this one like I said I wanted to put it higher there's just others that I was more excited about so that's that one next one um is called halfway hex I got this on day 17 so this is number eight this is actually three of six by Kimberly Frost again I think these ones are pretty simple so you could just read them alone I put this one where I did just because I really enjoy like the cover and it just seems like a, a fun time. And so this uh, witch is from the South and she's having to deal with a lot of different characters. So the local residents who form a scripture spouting posse. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me. There's the World Association of Magic that arrives to investigate her and the somebody's giving her visions. And so there's just a lot happening. And this one just seems like it will be a, just a fun, enjoyable read. Uh, and it just seems like a good time. So um, I like kind of the premise and it seems like it's going to be kind of have some humor in it as well. And so, yeah, that's why this one's kind of more middle of the road. Um... I'm just, I think I'll enjoy that one a lot. This next one, number seven, I got on day 16. It is actually the second out of two. Um, there is a book that goes before it. Not necessarily like in series fashion, but it has the same character. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get that one first or just read this one alone. I'll probably just read this one alone. This one, I was so excited about when I got it. Uh, I got it on day 16. I actually looked it up because I was like, oh, wow, this book. And it does not have good reviews. And I think that might have colored where this one went just a little bit. Um, I might have put it higher if I hadn't already seen those reviews. I still think I'm going to enjoy this, though. So hopefully that's the case. It's called uh, Haunt Me Still by Jennifer, Jennifer Lee Carl. And, or Carol, um, and yeah, basically it's kind of a Shakespeare, um, she, um, there's kind of the, the legend or the myth that goes along with Macbeth, and so she is a, a theater director, um, and, um, there's kind of a murder that goes along with that. And so they're just kind of like a, a mystery and trying to figure out what's, what's going on. Um, and I think they find like a, a cursed manuscript or something like that. So I like, I did read, um, I think it's this one. Ah, the books are falling. Much Ado in Moonlight where, you know, you have Hamlet and there's a ghost and such. And I really enjoyed this one. And so, I don't know, I just thought this one would be really cool, and I love the cover. I think the cover is absolutely beautiful, but it is a little lower, I think, just because of the bad reviews that I did see. So, and next is number six, which I got on day three, and my sister-in-law is actually really excited about this one, too. She wants to borrow it, and that is A Rebel Heart, which is one of three. 
So there is a trilogy. This is the first one, fortunately, so I can read it and see if I like it before I get the other two um, by Beth White. And yeah, this one, it's kind of like, I guess, like a historical romance. Um, because it says five years after the final shot was fired in the war between the states. Um, and then it's, you know, this, uh, this young woman who's trying to keep her sisters and her cousin and their plantation, you know, running. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I don't know. I just kind of like those little historical touches. And if I'm reading romance, I like the his historical touches. Or like I said, I like a really good plot line or um, character base. But if it has a little of that historical touch, I don't know. I really enjoy those. So that's why this one's a little higher up. And again, I think with all the complicated reads I have in this pile, this one's going to be one that's pretty simple and easy to read. Um, and again, that's probably why I put it higher. So the next one is the one I got on Christmas Day. My husband actually kind of got it as a, a joke. <laughs> but I think I'm actually going to really enjoy it. And this one's actually the first one of six. But the way the series is, it's actually kind of broken into two parts. So you are you have kind of two trilogies. But they all go with Dunk Dunkton. I think when I was doing my TikTok and my uh, Instagram, I called it Dunkshun but it's Duncan Wood by William Horwood. And it's like this whole complicated um, society of moles, um, which I love books that kind of humanize animals. Uh, my husband has a bunch of Brian Jacquez, and that's kind of what this reminds me of. And he liked the cover, and he actually, this is the only book he read a little bit of the synopsis on. But yeah, there's this whole... Um, society of moles and that's that's what's happening and it says Dunk Duncan Wood is the story of a quest into the nature of love and greed of oppression and liberty of integrity grace and the power of spirit so it's an epic fantasy of the highest order um but and it's the struggles between good and evil that have always plagued humankind but only in mole form so <laughs> I don't know I just I love that I loved like, The Secret of Nim, um, Thumbelina, like, I like with animals and, and how, like, they're kind of humanized, I guess. I like those types of stories, so I think I'm really gonna enjoy this one, which is why it's number five, and again, I got that on Christmas Day. That was the, the big book that he got me. The next one I got on day 24, so Christmas Eve, and this is, of course, number four, this one is book two of three, and I definitely think I need to get the first book again to be able to fully understand and grasp everything that's going to be happening in this book. And so this one, I'm just, the cover, again, this one almost went higher. Um, I just, I really struggled where to place this one, but there was just others I was drawn to more. And this is The Map of All Things by Kevin J. Anderson. And there's a war. Um, and so it's dividing the known world. And it started as a series of skirmishes and now is a full-blown crusade. So, um, so basically, and then there's a map that can guide the brave explorers to the mysterious key of creation. So I don't know. It just sounds really, really interesting. And um, the first one is the edge of the world. And then the last one's going to be called The Key to Creation. So, it just, I, it, it just drew me in. Um, I don't know how much I'll actually enjoy. I don't like, like, big epic war books necessarily. But I like, like, sea and, you know, there's sea monsters and the adventure, like, treasure hunt aspect of this I think I'm really gonna enjoy but that's why it's so high and like I said the cover just drew me right in the next one is this one is number six of ten but again I don't think it's quite necessary to read them in order I think it's more like the the character that's 
brought in to all these books. And this one's called Atlantis God by David Gibbons. I need to try to take off the sticker. It's pretty well stuck though. And this one just, again, it has that sea aspect, which I really enjoy. Um, and this one, it combines Nazis um, with, with the Atlantis like mystery type aspect. Um, so there's a Nazi bunker and with a secret and um, Jack Howard, I think, is the one that's kind of a reoccurring character in, in the series. Um, and he's head of the International Maritime University. And so they are realizing that they're kind of looking into Atlantis and they realize they're not just on the trail of the most sought after treasures in history, but are about to uncover a surprising link between Atlantis and the 1930s expedition of the Himmler's honor, honor Nerby. I probably, I don't know how to pronounce that word, but the Nazis department of cultural heritage. Um, and so, yeah, I think I like kind of like world war two aspects of things too and so combining that with you know Atlantis and such I think I'm really gonna enjoy this book and I can't wait to read this one this one I'm just gonna read I'm not gonna try to get any of the previous books there's obviously a lot of those them this one's smack in the middle and I don't think it's necessary like some of them is necessary for the world building this one I think it's more the character that's in each book I could be mistaken, but that's why this one is where it's at. So the next one is uh, number two, of course. I got it on day five. This is actually the first of seven books. So this one is by Robert Holstock. It's called Mythago Wood. And again, the foresty aspect. So um, there's a mystery of the last fragment of primeval forest um and so it consumed this George Huxley and now his sons have taken up his work after his death and so it's kind of a labyrinth full of myths come to life um mythagos that continue for ever um, where love and beauty haunt your dreams and may drive you insane. Like, just the synopsis is very short. It doesn't give you a whole lot of information. So I don't fully know what to expect. But what it gave you, I mean, it just sounds right up my alley. And that cover, I mean, that cover. This one was close to being number one. Like, it was very, very close. But it didn't. The number one spot goes to, and I really hope I do enjoy this one. Um, and this is book one of three, so it is a trilogy. Um, and that is The Tiger and the Wolf by Adrian Tchaikovsky. And this one I got on day seven, and I immediately said I thought this was going to be my most anticipated read. You know, there was others, you know, like this one, and then I kept like, oh, no, this one. But when I came to this one, nothing surpassed it. Um, since since then like this one I love the cover I think it's absolutely beautiful and basically it follows um, this girl and her father is the wolf clan chieftain and her mom is the queen of the tiger um, and those two clans hate each other <laughs> absolutely hate each other and they can turn into whatever animal. So the wolves can turn into wolves. The tigers can turn into tigers. She can turn into both. But that's something she's trying to keep hidden. And then her father has some grand plan and she's a part of it. Um, so she is, you know, um, I think she's she escapes um, and runs away. And so they're chasing her and trying to trying to get her. But the whole premise sounds amazing. The cover drew me in. Uh, I just, I'm really excited for this book. And I can't wait to read it. So that is the order of the books. What I'm most excited for, you know, what I was least excited for, to what I'm most excited for. I've been debating. I don't know if I should try to read them in the order I got them, other than, of course, um, the, the Lynn Curlin books. Um, those ones I would obviously read together, but otherwise I was thinking about reading them in the order I got them, or should I read them, you know, based on this list, either from least favorite 
to the one I'm anticipating enjoying the most or the opposite way, reading the one I'm anticipating the most to my least one that I'm not interested in. <laughs> um, let me know your thoughts. Like, which, how, what order should I read them in? Uh, let me know in the comments below. But I am so excited to read all these books. I'm definitely going to have to go make an order so I can, you know, get the first in series on some of these. And that way I can make sure I do read them kind of how they're meant to be read on some of these series. But yeah, let me know which one you think I'm gonna, well, you don't really know me too well, but which one you think would be the best read um, out of these? Uh, or if you've read any of, any of these, give me your insights as well. Um, whether you thought it was good, whether you didn't really enjoy it, and why. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited. I know this video is a little bit longer, but you know, there's, there's a lot of books here. I'm going to go ahead and leave you here. Make sure, again, if you're not already, please do subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on a thing because I am going to be doing little updates as I read these books. And then, like I said, I'll be doing, once I've read them all, um, probably my goal is to read them within the year and then next year before I get my 25 days of book miss, my new ones, um, is to rate them. So definitely keep an eye out if you're not already subscribed. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out. And then give this video a like while you're at it. It really does help. So excited for all these books. I'm going to leave you here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.